Today, the NTSB is putting the final touches on its investigation into the East Palestine train derailment. In a series of meetings, we could learn why tankers full of toxic chemicals were just burned off in the middle of town. New safety recommendations for the rail industry could also be coming up. But residents in East Palestine, Ohio, say they're losing their health and their homes, while Norfolk Southern walks away with just a slap on the wrist. News Nation chief investigative reporter Rich McHugh joining me this morning. He's been in East Palestine since the very beginning of this disaster. Good morning, Rich. What are people there telling you ahead of these meetings? Hey, good morning, Hannah. They're saying literally the same thing that they've been saying. I was at this hearing last year. They're saying the same thing that they've said all along. They're not getting the federal help that they need. They're sick. They can't get in their homes. They can't get their homes tested. Uh, they're still finding vinyl chloride here. There's just so many things that are unanswered for them. Um, and they are, they're angry. Uh, the NTSB is about to kick off this hearing at 9.30 this morning. Uh, they're going to drill down on two questions, why the train derailed. And the other focus of the meeting is why the release of the toxic chemicals into the atmosphere. I asked uh, Jennifer Homendi that she's the chair of the NTSB if the burning of the vinyl chloride was necessary last night. She said that will be answered today. Uh, chair Homendi, having turned over nearly every stone here, did have this to say. Take a look. What's the one thing that troubles you most after spending a year and a half investigating this? It should never have occurred. I said this from day one. It was 100% preventable. It was 100% preventable. It should never have occurred in the first place. So the chair, Hamadi, held a community meeting for residents who thanked her uh, and the NTSB for their investigation. She made clear the NTSB couldn't help the community with some of their biggest concerns, namely the issue pressing most, the civil class action lawsuit against Norfolk Southern and uh, whether it is fair, the deadline to sign just a week away. Residents are practically screaming from the rooftops for help. Here is resident Jamie Wallace, take a look. This could have been any American's backyard that this happened in, and they'd be treating you the same way. And that's why I ask people, put yourself in our shoes. When your kids are still having unexplained nosebleeds, you know, a year and a half later, when you're seeing seizures, when you're seeing, you know, an uptick in strokes, like, and nobody's listening and doing anything, and we're right here in the United States of America. Now, Hannah, I do want to say I've been reporting here for a year and a half. This is the first time just now that I've spoken to a Norfolk Southern official. They came up to me and presented me this brochure. It says, doing what's right. I asked him, I said, hey, can you do a, uh, an interview? And he said, well, I can't. He said, you know how it is. So <laughs> uh, there you have it, Hannah. We don't know how it is. We need answers to tough questions, Rich, that you continue to ask. And we appreciate that. I know residents do as well. Rich McHugh, right. thank you. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.